I want to show you another way to create a report or a different way to go about doing it and some design tips that I think you'll find helpful. I want to create a report based upon the sales profit query. So let's go ahead and right click on it and go to its design view to see what it's based upon. It's these four tables and from those tables we got these fields here and whew, we're going to be busy quite a bit. Let's go ahead and close out. So to go ahead and create that report based upon this query, let's come up here, click on the Create tab, go to the Reports group, and let's click on Report Design. Opens it up in Design View with the Page Header section, so whatever we put up there is going to be repeated at the top of every page, and then of course the details, which will be all the records being displayed on every page. Now to go ahead and base this report upon the Sales Profit Query, we need to bring up its property sheet. We can do that by coming over and double clicking really fast in the gray area. Double click. There's the property sheet for the report. And then on the All tab, the record source or the source of where we're going to get our records. Go ahead and click in there. Click on its drop down arrow. And it's going to be the sales profit query. Select that. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And before we go any further, let's go ahead and save this. Now I already have a sales profit report. So let's go ahead, when we come up here and click Save, let's do RPT, of course, for Report, and do Sales, and let's do And Profit. So when we hit Enter, it's right there, the And. That's the difference between these two, and that's the one that we're working in. And so here, I want to show you a different way to add fields to your report. It's going to take a lot longer, be more tedious, but we're here together. And the whole point being is becoming more familiar with your report when it comes to designing and the different ways you can go about doing it. And so the other way to do it is to be able to add an actual text box. So to do that, let's come up here, click on the Design tab, go to the Controls group, and because my screen resolution is so teeny tiny, I have to click on the Controls arrow to be able to view the controls. And we want the text box. Go ahead and click on that and move your mouse down below into the Details grid. And then when you click, make sure that you leave enough room over on the left-hand side for a label. So if I'm right up against it, the label is going to basically go nowhere to go. So it'll go right underneath the text box. I don't want to do that. So I'll click here. You can see the labels there. Then the unbound text box. And so let's go ahead and give our label a name. We can double-click on the border. You can actually go inside it and just type in the name of it. Or you can go ahead and bring up the property sheet for the label. Come over here in the property sheet. There's the generic name. That's for the designer in the design view as opposed to the caption, which is going to be for the front end user, what they see in the report. So for the back end, for us, we can do LBL, three letter prefix, and this is going to be the book title label. Then hit the tab key, and for the caption, what will actually be displayed in the box will be book. Well, I'll start typing in there. You can go ahead and type in there. Let me hit the escape key and just come over here and delete the caption. Type in book, title, hit enter, and it updates it, but it's cut off the title. So to go ahead and resize that, you can hover over the right middle resizing handle, that little teeny tiny orange box that when you do it, you'll get arrows pointing in opposite directions. You can go ahead and click and drag, or you can do a double click so it does a best fit. Cool. And then for the unbound text box, as you recall in an earlier training video, you can actually select that, come over here in the property sheet on the All tab, in the control source field and type in an expression where you can go ahead and say okay multiply one of the fields in the report or form where you can go ahead and say okay multiply this field by that field in any case that's in an earlier training video this video instead of typing in an expression this is going to be based upon the book title field which is in the sales profit query which is based upon the book project because that's where it's pulling the book title field from so to be able to pull that in and bound this text box to that field so it's no longer unbound. Let's go ahead and click in the control source field and then click on its drop down arrow and there's the book title. Select that and there we go. Updates it no longer unbound but it's tied to the book title data field in the book projects table. Now there's an easier way to go ahead and add existing fields to the grid besides doing it this way but I wanted to show you this way because once you have an unbound text box there that you can go ahead and just come over here in the control source and click on the drop down arrow as we just did and choose a field to base it upon or you can delete that and say well it's going to be an expression and type in well multiply this field by this number or these two fields together or add them up so once you have it set you can always clear it out and do something else with it choose where to go ahead and base it upon or an expression 
So let's come up here on the Design tab, go to the Tools group, and click on Add Existing Fields. So you don't have to keep adding text boxes down below and then, you know, choosing the field to be based upon when it's so much easier to do it this way. But again, becoming more familiar and what you're able to do with those text boxes. So the other fields that I want to be able to add to my report will be the customer name, double click, and also the book sold. Now let's go ahead and close out of the field list. And if I go to my report view, right click and take a gander at it. Okay, there's the first record. I scroll down, there's the second, and look at all that garbage between those records. Well, that's horrifying. Well, maybe that's good because when I print this off, we're at a meeting and I want everybody to go ahead and write their thoughts below each record here. In any case, let's go ahead and right click and go back to the design view. And I'm thinking, we need to clean this up. And instead of having the, well, the labels next to the titles, let's just go ahead and have the titles up in the page header section. So at the top of each page, we get the titles for the corresponding data down below. So let's go ahead and select the book title label, hold down the shift key and select the other two. Do control X to cut that, then click on the page header tab and control V as in Victor to paste that. And then we want to be able to move them around because, you know, that's how it's going to appear at the top of each page like that and that's not working. Let's go ahead and click off because I want to be able to have customer name and the book sold something well maybe like that kind of space them out just a bit because the book title may be a little bit lengthy here well not the label I mean that's the label up above but down below I want to go ahead and align the data below the title the label as it were pun intended and but to go ahead and add the customer name there and add the book sold there and as you recall in an earlier training video that if you're trying to eyeball it clicking and dragging to align you know maybe the left hand sides of both the label and its corresponding text box together you can go ahead and shift click on both of them and then right click on the border of either one of them go down to align and if you do left align it takes between the two in this example the one that's furthest to the left and brings the other to the left so they're left aligned together so let's go ahead and align and do left there we go and then let's see what it looks like right now right click on it go to well we can go to the report view right off the bat I don't like it because look at the lines around the boxes plus the data is being cut off oh that's terrible well let's right click and go to the layout view that way we can hover over the data field here the right hand side until I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions and click and drag to stretch that open more so okay and then it fixes it so wow automatically updated the layout view is that what's gonna look like in the report view automatically collapsed them all together. Well, let's take a gander. That was kind of magical. Let's go to the print preview. And it did. Well, imagine that. Let's go ahead and right click and go back to the design view. And automatically what it did when I started messing with it in the layout view collapsed, which is an interesting point, the whole grid here because that was the spacing that it went from one record before it went to the second record after it hit this wide open space. So, well, let's right click and go to the report view. See all that space? So it just collapsed it for me. Oh, that's nice and magical. Let's go ahead and go back to the design view. So, you know, I just clicked and dragged it up here, made it tight. Also, you know, squish that tight. If there's any space, it's now completely tied. So let's go ahead and right click, go back to the print preview and book title at the top of each page, customer name and book sold. But again, well, the book title yeah okay not completely seeing the complete title in some of these records and the customer name so let's right click and go back to the layout view and let's go ahead and click and drag one of them till we can see most of it and maybe we need to go ahead and select the label and then hold down the shift key and select one of the fields down below and then go ahead and click and drag and move them all over well not too far over Let's see, is that going to be enough for these guys? Click on that and then drag them. Well, okay. We'll just have to go for a best case scenario and say maybe we won't be able to see the book title if it's really huge. And then let's see the book sold. Oh, we can get skinny on that, can't we? Yes, we can. In any case, next thing I want to do is go ahead and get rid of the lines. So let's right click and go to the design view. And let's go ahead and select book title, the text box, hold down the shift key, click customer name and book sold. 
And then let's come up here, click on the Format tab, go to the Control Formatting group, and let's do Shape Outline, and let's make it transparent. And then go ahead and right click and go to the, let's do Print Preview. Oh, that's better. Okay. What about the alternating color? We've got white, gray, white, gray. If you want to change that up, you can right click and go to the design view. And you want to bring up the properties sheet for the detail sections. So you can just double click really fast on the detail bar and then come over here in the property sheet. And we're looking at the alternate back color. So let's go ahead and click in there, click on its build button. And there's the color right now, white background one, a little bit darker, 5%. Let's go ahead and do something a little bit different. Orange accent, two lighter, 80%. Ooh, what a name. Let's go ahead and select that. And then take it for a test drive, right click, go to print preview, and oh, that's not too bad. Then you can go ahead and click on it to zoom out, come down at the bottom, click to go to the next page, and just a total of two pages. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.